Hello everybody, my name is Alan Underwood with CodingBlocks.net and today's video is going to be a full review of the Moonlander keyboard by ZSA. So, first thing that I've been doing in these keyboard reviews is basically tell you what my just overall thought of this keyboard is and in a nutshell, I love it. It's really a tremendous keyboard. Does that mean you should go out and buy it? It's not for everybody. So with that, I want to get into what would make this keyboard right for you. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk about the things that I love about this keyboard. And then I'll go into the things that I'm not so crazy about. And then in the end, I'll try and summarize with a description for who this keyboard would actually fit for. So Without further ado, let me go ahead and get rolling. So the first thing that I absolutely love about this keyboard is how compact and portable it is. So it comes in this case right here that is about an eight inch long by seven inch wide by three inch tall case. And that has everything in it that you need to pack it up and take it with you anywhere if you wanna travel with this keyboard. And by that, I mean, you can open this thing up it's got the keyboards in both halves. I actually lay the cables right there in the middle so that they don't get crushed up and don't smash up the keys. But that is absolutely phenomenal. And in this case as well, they also have a little space for a little Allen wrench that you'll need to adjust the feet to be able to spin them out, tighten them up and all that kind of stuff. So this is fantastic. This is one of the most portable keyboards that I would call like a, like a truly um phenomenal keyboard setup with mechanical keys and everything backlighting all that that's this portable that i'm aware of so with that some of the things that i do love is the fact that you can take the halves of this keyboard and you can pull them just about as far as part as you want so i mean it's not exactly as far apart as you want but this little cable right here that comes with it is the only thing that keeps this thing apart. And it looks like you've got about three feet of distance that you could separate the left and the right halves of the keyboard. And that's pretty phenomenal. I don't know of a ton of other keyboards that give you that amount of freedom. Um, another thing for gamers out there, they would probably really love this feature is you can totally just hook up the left side of the keyboard, which has your WASD keys and you don't even have to have the right side of the keyboard on your desk if you don't want. So you can totally run this thing in a gamer mode and, and have a lot of space on your desk. Um, the backlighting of the keys are absolutely phenomenal. Like you can basically program them to be whatever color you want. And to take it a step further, it's not all the keys at once. You can program each individually and even on multiple layers to be what they want. So if you want a key layout for Photoshop or, or um, you know, Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere, something like that, like you can set this thing up with color combinations that will help you remember what keys to press when you're doing things and you have complete full control over that. So that's pretty amazing. And the backlighting is pretty good. It goes decently bright. And like I said, you can basically choose any color you want per key. Um, Another part of this keyboard that is super important is the fact that you can tent and angle the keyboard almost as much as you want. And by almost, what I mean is you have the ability to angle the keyboard either down away so your hand sits up over the top kind of cupping it like that or you can have it angled further up like that so that you can hold it or hold your hands on the keyboard like that. There are some caveats to that, like not all the positions work great. If, you, if you're going to tilt it over like this, then you have to place the thumb, the thumb cluster down to sort of support the keyboard, otherwise it'll tip over. So there are, some, there are some things that you just can't get perfect like that, but for the most part, you have a really decent amount of range and how, how tall and and how um, angled you can make the keyboard. I want to say that the the actual feet on these things are probably a good inch and a half to two inches on this. So when we look at this thing, this particular piece right here looks like it's about two inches tall. So if you wanted to set it up on the desk like that and you tilt it up like that, that's fine. But again, remember, if you do that, you're not going to be able to angle this 
thumb cluster up because then the, the keyboard will tilt, tip over and hit the desk. But if you're willing to push that thing down, then you can actually have this thing at a really good angle sitting on the desk, probably about like that. So you have some options here. It's not the most perfect ever. What I would have liked to have seen maybe was the ability. So you could, by the way, I don't think it ship. It doesn't ship with them, but it's got a post on each side to where you can move this, this arm to the other side. Maybe if they had provided four of these things, you know, one per side, then you could have done that and not lost that functionality. So maybe if you wanted to do that, you could probably even contact ZSA and say, Hey, could you ship me a couple more of these legs to put on here? And then you could probably set this thing up however you want. Now, Unfortunately, you can put this thing down, which means that you could have this angled up a little bit, but there is nowhere on the bottom sides of the keyboard to put these legs. So you're kind of limited in that you're not going to be able to tilt it super forward. So if you wanted your hand up on the keys like this, that's not going to be as capable as if you're trying to lay the keyboard down like this and type on your desk. So just be aware, while it is very flexible, there are some some positions that you're just not going to be able to get perfectly with this thing, at least not from my testing and without using your thumb cluster to sort of support it. So, again, still pretty good, though. Uh, let's see. What else I got? I, I ended up doing a list because I recorded this already once and, and I just felt like I was all over the place. So I'm trying to go in order here. Um, another thing, this comes with a two year warranty. So if anything goes wrong with it, just contact ZSA and they'll take care of you. Uh, I haven't had to do that, fortunately, um, and I hope not to because these things take a long time to ship in the first place. So I don't know what the response or the support would be like, but I'm going to hope that it's good. But the fact that it is backed by a two-year full warranty is really good stuff. Um, so another thing that I really like about this, and I've mentioned it on some of the other keyboards that I've reviewed, is if you look at the keys, they're not in a straight line here. They have like a, a, a sculpted row is what I like to call it. And, and I've seen on other keyboards to where they curve with the curve of your hand, right? So your fingers sort of lay in place. And then also they have these keys are in a columnar setup. So they're straight up and down. So that means that it's a little bit easier for you to place your hands in a natural way and then just reach up and straight down for the keys that you're trying to type. So really excellent layout in terms of that. I do like it quite a bit. Um, so that brings up another thing. We're talking about the keys. There are just tons of key switches available for this. And I ended up pulling it up so I could look at it. And let's see. I mean, they've got everything from tactile to clicky to linear. So they've got, I'm going to list them off real quick, just so everybody will know on here. Um, there's probably about 10 of them. So you have the Cherry MX Browns. Those are tactile. The Cherry MX Blue are clicky. That's what this one is that I've got right here. Like they're pretty loud. I mean, this is right up next to my mouth. This is me talking and this is the sound that you're hearing with it. Um, Cherry MX Blues, we got the, the Kale Bronze. Those are clicky. We have the Kale Gold that are clicky. The Kale Silver, which are linear, which means that it's more of a push. It doesn't have that click or that pop when you do it. The Kale Copper, tactile, so you'll feel it, but it shouldn't be too loud. So that's really the difference between the clicky and the loud. The clicky are going to sound really loud. The tactile, you'll still get that feel of the, the key kind of breaking when you hit a point. Um, that's your tactile. Uh, the Kale Box Brown, those are tactile. The Kale Box Red are linear, so they're more push-like. They don't have a break feel when you do it. Um, the Kale Box White are clicky, and the Kale Box Black. So tons of key options that you have there. So just be aware that you'll kind of want to do a little bit of research if you decide to get this thing into which key combination you want. And that brings me up to... The next thing that is really cool, let's say that you pick the keyboard and it's louder than you want it to be. You can go buy a full set of key switch replacements with this. They actually ship this thing with a tool 
to where you can pop off those key switches and put in another set. It doesn't void the warranty. The keyboard is designed to be able to do that. So you can buy 10 sets of key switches if you want and just replace them and you can get the one that you want. Now, that's not a cheap thing that you're going to do because I want to say that these these key switches, every time I've ever looked at them, you're probably talking a little over $100 a set, but you have that capability. So just know that that's there. That's pretty excellent. Um, I don't know of too many mechanical keyboards that let you pop off and change the switches you want. All right, so that brings me to some of the functionality of this. And there is the Oryx Live Training Program, which believe me, you're going to need it. So most keyboards, you don't have like a, a training program to learn how to use the keyboard. This thing, as you'll see here, it has several keys that aren't marked uh, along the top and the bottom. And you'll notice at the top, you only have number keys. So you'll have to learn how to navigate this keyboard. And also along the, the other edge of the keyboard, you have these sort of non-marked special keys. So you'll probably spend a decent amount of time in this in this live training program just to get comfortable with the keyboard. And that's an amazing thing that they actually built this and knew that this wasn't going to be something that people could just pick up and roll with. So kudos to them for doing that. And definitely you'd want to take advantage of it. Um, another thing that I do like about this keyboard, I don't have it plugged up right now, is they have this really cool LED lights, these cool LED lights on the keyboard. And I'll see if I can plug it up real quick so that you can see it. Um, it's really, I mean, this keyboard is beautiful. Really what it boils down to is they, they truly have done an amazing job with it. So let me see if I can plug this up real quick. So always fun when you do things on the fly. All right, so I'm back here. So what I was talking about is like, check out these LEDs right here. That's actually really cool. I mean, it's beautiful. So when you push a special button, like I think I pushed the, the Oryx button on this and you'll see it light up, right? Like that's pretty nifty. And as you can see here, the backlighting on the keys, like I've got it set to this aqua right now and it really does look good. As you can see the key caps themselves or the, the actual key, the, the, the switches themselves have a light up feature underneath it. And then you can see on the top, that it comes through. So again, just a, a really gorgeous design. I mean, generally speaking, it's, it's a fantastic looking keyboard. Um, another thing I want to point out here is the fact that the keyboard by default is USB-C, which is excellent because if you want to use this thing with a new MacBook Pro, you can do that because by default, it actually has a USB-C connector. The, the connector on the keyboard itself is USB-C, and then the other side of the cable is USB-C. So it'll work with all your newest laptops, but they also shipped it with an adapter because they know not everybody is progressive in that term. And so you have the old standard USB-A. So pretty much you're covered. I mean, if you've got, if you've got a micro USB or some other oddity that you only have available, I'm sure you're going to have to go get your own adapter. But for the most part, this is going to cover 90, 95% of the cases out there. Um, all right. So here's where this thing really shines is it, it's, it's a little computer is really what it is. This thing has 36 layers that you can program. And what that means is this keyboard can basically be 36 different keyboards for you if you want it to be. You can set up the first layer, to, just, just for example, um, to, to give you a little bit of context here by layers, because if you've never seen this and you have no idea what I'm talking about, let's say that you use both Mac and Windows. You could set up layer one to be your Mac layout, and you have all your keys set up to work on your Mac. Let's say layer two, you set up to be your Windows keyboard layout because that's how you want it. Layer three, you could set up to be your media player layout. So um, pausing, playing, fast forwarding, volume up and down and that kind of thing. You can make layer four your calculator layer. Layer five could be your Photoshop layer. Like you could customize it so each key has a different color to correspond with functions in Photoshop. You can do 36 layers like that. Now, that is actually incredibly powerful and really amazing. And I want to touch on just a little bit what these layers mean. So 
they have so much functionality baked into their, I think it's called Oryx. It might be Wally. I can't even remember now. Um, I guess I should probably look that up. I unplug my mouse. That's fantastic. Um, so what's cool about this is when you go to set these key layers, really what you're doing is you have the option to make any key basically do whatever you want it to do. But with that, you can do multiple things. So for instance, you can make a key just a standard key. So you, by default, if I remember correctly, which I, I hated the default layout that came with the moon lander. I, like, I, I tried it for a week and I just I could not get used to it. I didn't like it. But an example is I believe that the Z key by default, if you just tap the Z, then it types a Z character. If you held the Z down, then it turned into a control mod um you know a, a control key so a modifier key and that's really cool i couldn't get used to it because there were times that i want to type a z and i guess i let my finger linger and so it wouldn't type it and you know whatever you can see sort of what would happen there but i'm sure that if you spent the time to get used to it you could do some amazing things um to go along with that i'm going to try and look this up real quick and i'll, I'll pause this and come back so they have the ability for you to do all kinds of stuff. So like that, that Z button that I was talking about, if you tap it, it's a Z button. If you hold it down, it's the left control. Well, they have a number of these special modifier keys that you can do that with. So if I wanted to make X be one of these things, then I could say, hey, if you hold, then make it the left shift or the alt or the con control or command or windows. So you have the ability to do those things. Well, in addition to that, you have the ability to say, hey, what does this key do when you just tap it? What does it you do when you hold it? What does it do when you double tap it? And what do you do when you tap and then hold? So, you know, they have a ton of different things. And then on top of that, you can assign each one of the macros if you want. Um, and then you can customize the colors. So this thing turns into this ultimate programmable interface that you kind of have all the control that you want over it. And so that's truly powerful. If you have needs for do like I can't fathom somebody doing 36 layers of these things because you'd probably spend a month doing it. But if you have that need, you've got it. You can totally do it. And that's pretty amazing. Uh, speaking about these layers, I do want to mention two keys that I'd never heard of before this keyboard. And I'm guessing ZSA probably has it on the ergo docs and those as well, but they have the meh key and the hyper key and meh is like M E H. And what's really cool is the meh key is basically control alt shift. So that's a modifier. So if you typically do something like in a, in a programming application or something, you do control alt shift and F right you can accomplish all that with two button presses, the me key and then your F key. Well, then they have the hyper key that takes it to the next level, which is alt control shift plus either the command or windows button, depending on whether you're on Mac or windows. So now instead of holding down five keys to do something, you can hold down two keys. And so I really like that, that having those modifier keys that do that combination of things for you keeps you from having to do all those finger um, you know, uh, gymnastics to try and get to that stuff. So that's really good. And it's a, a very nice ergonomic feature. If you can train your brain to take advantage of that, instead of stretching your fingers out to hold down control shift alt and all that kind of stuff. So really good. And I think I mentioned it um, earlier. One of the things about this, along with the two year warranty, hopefully you won't need it because it is built remarkably well. Like this thing, it's even, even the build on it is gorgeous, you know, let alone the top part that you're looking at all the time, the bottom of it's beautiful. It's just super well put together. The machining of it is excellent. Like I, I would hope that this thing would last a long time to come. And I think as long as you're not abusing it, it should. So now those are all the things that I really do like about this machine. This, I, I might as well call it a machine because it's really a computer. Like it has an arm processor in it. So at any rate, it's probably as powerful as some phones a couple of years ago. Uh, so let's get into some of the things that I don't love. And, and some of them are nitpicks. Some of them are, are 
truly things that, that bother me a little bit. So I already mentioned the, the tenting and the angling, the fact that you can't really do it to exactly what you want, no matter who you are, that bugs me. Like you were sort of stuck with a few certain positions, even though it, it will go to a good angle on those, you have to set it up. And, and if, and if it doesn't fit with, with the thumb pad being where it needs to be, then it, it might just collapse and not even work. So you are a little bit limited in that. Um, still really good and still better than most keyboards that you're going to get off the shelf. So don't make it out like this is just trash. That's not what I'm saying. It just, I really wish that it was a little bit better in that regard. Um, another thing that really bugged me. So on my desk, I have a wooden desktop and, and I've showed it in my other videos with the uh, Kinesis and some other things. This has like a little rubber tip on the end of this leg here and it just didn't grip very well. And there's really there's nothing else that has grip on it. So you're, well, I take that back. You have two points of like tacky contact here, this nub at the end, this one here, and then the thing on the end of the leg. So if you move this leg over to this side, then you're getting the contact there and there and vice versa. So you have two points of contact. So any amount of pressure on this thing at all, and it starts sliding around my desk, and that drove me crazy. Now, some people said, hey, put some Flex Seal or something on there, and if this was going to be my keyboard, maybe I would have done that. Uh, this is actually Outlaw's keyboard that I've had way too long while I was reviewing this due to this year being crazy, um, but that, that does drive me a little bit crazy. So I would say if you can have something in the place where this thing's going to be laying down, like I know outlaw has like a huge, like mouse pad. It's almost like a desk pad that covers it. And that would keep it in place. Just know that if you've got like a polyurethane surface or a super smooth surface, like what I do, it's going to slide around a little bit. And that gets annoying because the whole point of an ergonomic keyboard is having your hands in a certain spot. And when they keep moving all over the place, you're, I, I was constantly reeling it back in. And that drove me a little bit crazy. Um, the columnar key layout. I do love the layout here, right? But one thing I want to show is your fingers do have to stretch a ways to get to it. So it, it's it's an excellent layout, but the the keys are a decent distance apart. So you know you you may end up having to shift your hand around to get to everything on the keyboard. It's it's not terrible. Usually I have to move my index finger up to the top left. I have to shift my hand for that and my pinky finger up to the top right. Um, you know, talking about the right hand side and vice versa for the left side. Um, otherwise my hands can reach most of the keys on here. So it's, it's not bad again, compared to most keyboards on the market, it's actually quite good. But when you've used something like the Kinesis Advantage 2, where they made an effort to bring all the keys closer so that you don't have to stretch your fingers as far to do things. If you are somebody with like tendon issues or, or finger pain or maybe wrist pain from having to shift your hand around a lot, this may be a little bit too far for you to want to go with that. Um, all right, so let's see what else we got. The raised key switches. All right, so I showed you this thing plugged in, and as you can see, the actual key switch is exposed on the bottom. These things aren't recessed down into the into the casing like most keys on most keyboards. And with that, it, it actually has a couple of things that are interesting. So first, it makes the glow of this thing look beautiful when the RGB lighting's on. All right, so that's that's the positive. Now, some of the downsides are I usually have these keyboards split, so you know, I've got, I've got my left keyboard on the left side and my right, you know, obviously. Um, but I'll have a little bit of space in between. And usually I lay my headphones. Oops. Usually I lay my headphones in between here. Well, my headphone cable sometimes would get up in these slots and I go to type a key and it wouldn't move. And I was like, oh man, is the thing broken? And I'd realize that my headphone wire got in up underneath the keys. And so I'd have to pull it out and, and do that. So just know that having those exposed, if you plan on running headphones down the middle of your desk and in between your keyboard splits, that might become a thing. It was never a big deal. It, it happened to me once every week or two, and, I, and I'd freak out mentally for a second before I realized what was going on, right? So not a huge deal, just something to be aware of. But the other thing to know is like I, I mentioned, these are the Cherry MX Blues, and they're loud. 
like when I'm really typing on this thing, it, it, it sounds like a little war going off in my office. My wife absolutely hated this keyboard. And here's the deal. When the key switches are actually sitting above the casing, the casing no longer takes some of that noise and, and muffles it a little bit in this. You are getting the full cherry blue experience on this keyboard. So I'd venture to say, I mean, I don't have any measurements on a cherry blue where they're recessed in the case, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is a good 30% louder than one where the keys actually sit down in the keyboard. So just know that if you're going for the clicky, you're going to get it with this and it will sound amazing. And if there's anybody else sitting around you, they're probably going to hate you. Uh, but these keys do feel amazing. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so just be aware of that when you're going to pick out the key switches. Uh, what else we got? Okay. So the other thing, man, I mentioned that I love the LEDs on this thing, but because I had my keyboard angled in a way to where my key, my hands were comfortable on it. You never could see it. And it's funny how that actually matters because if you accidentally hit a modifier key or something, like you go to layout number two, sometimes you get a status indicator to let you know that you had clicked some sort of modifier key. You'd accidentally click the, the, the Oryx key or something and you wouldn't know and you go to type and it wouldn't work and, and you couldn't figure out why. And unless you looked up over the top of the keyboard and saw the status LEDs, you wouldn't have realized that you had pushed something. So I, I wish that the thing was more visible. I'm sure that if it was right up in your face, people would complain about the fact that you had these bright LED status lights in your face. Like I'm sure it's a no-win situation for them, but I do wish that it was more visible. I don't know exactly what the solution would be, but you know, Again, I never could see them. Uh, I ultimately, I would almost always unplug the keyboard and plug it back in to, to sort of reset it back to the to the layer zero, so that I could get my bearings again because there was no indicator that I could find of what was going on. Um, so, the thirty six layers that is one of the biggest pros of it. I've also got to say the sheer customizability of this thing is also one of the things that I found. A little overwhelming so you know when you get something you just want to be able to use it i tried that with this keyboard i tried to plug it in i tried to use the standard layout that comes with the moonlander i i straight up hated it like i never could get comfortable on it it nothing felt right like i just did not like it which means that you then have to go into experimentation mode and start setting up key layouts that you think will work for you and What's interesting is the Kinesis has one, two, three, four, five, six, six buttons per thumb. And it seems overwhelming, but it ends up being amazing in reality because all the extra things that you want to do are all there. These have four keys per thumb. And I, man, I almost wish there was at least just one more. It, it always felt like if I tried to set one of these to command, another one to control, another one to alt, and this to, to something else, like I, I think I ended up making this escape because I do a lot of programming. Like I always felt like, man, I, if there was just one more key, it would have been amazing. So you end up tweaking and, and customizing those keyboard layouts a lot to get them to where they are what you want to type on all the time. Like, no lie, the, when I used the default layout that came with the keyboard, the keyboards were sliding all over the place because I felt like I couldn't ever get to things naturally. And so I was moving my hands a lot and ultimately sliding the keyboards all over the place. After I spent time tweaking the layouts to what I liked and what I preferred, then then they didn't move as much because I felt my hands naturally would just move over the keys and they knew where to go, Right. And, and it's interesting because like on the kinesis layout, one of the thumb buttons on the left hand is the backspace. Well, for whatever reason on the Moonlander, that never felt right to me. And so I ended up making the button to the left of the A my backspace because I don't really ever use caps lock. And that just felt like, oh, okay, reach over there to the left backspace and it worked great. So, so just know the customizability of it is, is second to none. 
But that's also it's I, I equate it to playing video games nowadays. Like if I if I play a video game, I want to play something where I can jump in and play for 15 minutes, enjoy the heck out of it and get out like a Call of Duty match online or something like that. If I've got to get into an RPG game because I don't have that much time and I've got to go find the best sword and find the best gemstone and rhinestones and magical things to make the thing work. I'm just like, man, this is too much. I just want to get in hack and slash. Right. So that's what this reminds me of. Like you have to be willing to go on that quest to find the layout that works for you. And once you do, you'll absolutely be rewarded with a typing experience that is excellent, but you got to spend the time to get there. So just, just be aware of that. I think I beat that death now. So All right, so this is where I get to, is this thing for you? So I think I've I've narrowed this down to where you should be able to answer that question with some of these. Is your ultimate goal eliminating wrist pain and, and that kind of thing? It might be for you. If you experience tendon pain and, and muscle pain from stretching your fingers, typing on other keyboards, I would say this is probably not your best bet. Because like I said earlier, you do have to kind of stretch your fingers to get to the top and bottom rows from the home row on this keyboard when you're typing. So keeping the keys closer together, this doesn't do a great job at that. However, if... If shoulder strain is a thing, you can move these things as close together as you want or as far apart as three feet apart and and type like that. Like if you want to type like this, you can. So this can really get that done for you. And also if the angle of the keyboard is something that you're concerned about with typing, this might work for you. Now, I did mention there are certain angles that it just won't work well with because it'll tip over and it just it's not set up to handle all the different tinting and angling options, but it's pretty good. So it might actually handle that. So just keep that in mind. If your ultimate goal is having an amazing keyboard that you can travel with, this might be the very top of the list. It's fantastic. It is super portable, comes with a great carry case. You can throw it in a backpack. You can throw it in a suitcase. Won't take up much room and you'll have an awesome typing experience to take with you on the road like it's killer so if that's your thing this should be near the top of your list if you want something that you can customize to your heart's desire you want to play this thing like you would skyrim and go in and modify it all the time I don't know of really any other keyboards that are this customizable even with um, you know, hacking firmware onto other keyboards, this thing was built with it in mind. It has an ARM processor in it to handle these things, and it's got the storage to do up the 36 layers and be able to switch between them. It's fantastic. If that's your goal, that's your game, do it. Um, I did, I, you know, one thing that I forgot to mention that I mentioned on on the other keyboard reviews is the arrow keys. I've gotten used to where the arrow keys are on these hyper ergonomic keyboards like the um, Zergotech and and the Kinesis and all that. I do like where the the arrow keys are on these things. They're in similar places to the others, and they work out really well. So, um, you know, again, as a developer, I use those keys quite a bit. I'm going to get people say, just learn Vim. You know, great, but Vim isn't everything. Sure, you can use a lot of things, but, you know, whatever. Just saying, I do like it. So ultimately, I said it at the beginning of this review. I do love this keyboard. It's a fantastic keyboard. You will have to put some time into making it what you want it to be. I wouldn't necessarily just try the default for long if you feel frustrated with it. You know, maybe stick with it a few days. And and if it doesn't do it for you, try something else. Like, after I started modding it, I really started to enjoy it. Before that, I, I really was not super thrilled with the keyboard, but after you spend the time, it really becomes amazing. So with that, I think I covered basically everything. Um, I, I want to thank 
uh, Miraculix, who who left comment on a couple of the other ergonomic keyboard reviews to ask about the hand and the arm positions, the shoulder split, the fingers, and all that stuff. Because I think I touched on those, but maybe not all together before. So um, you know, thanks to that comment, that's why I wanted to hit on you know finger strain, wrist strain, and and how these things would help in those different areas. So. Uh, if you do have any other questions on this thing, please feel free to ask. I, I do plan on, hopefully this time, not, you know, a couple months in between. I do plan on doing a comparison of the Moonlander, the Kinesis Advantage 2, and the Zergo Tech to just give you my thoughts on the three of them. And if you're on the fence, because all of these are like within 30 bucks of each other in terms of overall price, um, hopefully just give you an idea of what I would pick and why, and depending on the situation. So with that, thanks for sticking with me. I know this is a super long review for a keyboard, but I'm also guessing when you're looking to spend over $300 on a keyboard, you kind of want to know all the ins and outs of it and what you're getting into. So hopefully you've gotten that here. If you know, if you enjoyed this video, please do leave a thumbs up and subscribe. We'll have more of this stuff coming here in the near future. And with that, also check out our podcast. If you're a developer or you're interested in software development at all, you know, you can get some kicks there, get, get some laughs and also learn some things, hopefully. So uh, you can check that out at codingblocks.net. So with that, again, I'm Alan Underwood with codingblocks.net and hope you enjoyed this. Subscribe if you loved it or subscribe if you loved it. And I'll be back soon. Thanks.